It is that time of the year when mangoes are in peak production. It is the time when the prices are lowest, of course due to the high supply. What business guys call market glut. I read somewhere that almost half of the farm produce in Kenyan farms does not get to the final client. Post harvest losses. Most farmers may not be able to export their produce due to many challenges like pests and diseases too. Have you ever heard of mango fruit fly? Or maybe you bought a nice big mango just to find it rotten inside with worms. Or maybe you visited a farmer and wondered why he had traps suspended on the trees. That can be a good IPM video, huh? I was hoping I would show you the effects of the pest on the fruits, but I guess my sample is in the early stages of infection. It is not so clear. Anyhow, I'm sure you know the pain you feel after you buy a big fruit, very expensively, just to eat a small piece or discard the whole fruit. Anyway, today I want to talk about post-harvest preservation of fruits. I will use materials available in most homesteads. I want to challenge you to undertake this project with me, since you can even buy these fruits cheaply now. Now, for those guys who are more academically inclined out there, you can research more on this process. To me, this is my first time doing this, but it will also serve as a proof of concept for me. The first thing you do is to wash the fruits clean. You must use clean water, or I should say portable water, the kind of water you can drink. You can even use a food grade disinfectant for better results. Bleach or chlorinated water will do fine. This action will kill most microbes on the skin of the fruits and of course remove any soil. I know I am getting into issues related to food safety, but that is part of farming too. Food safety as a set of standards that serve to avoid the risk of contamination through the entire process. Ever heard of HACCP and the like? You can look it up and learn more. Clean hands before starting the process and each time you visit the toilet or I should say the washrooms. Maintain short nails, no nail polish, remove rings and wrist watches or those fake nails that ladies install on their fingers. Cover your hair, operate on clean surfaces, use permitted food grade disinfectants, avoid talking too much, sneezing or touching yourself while handling food, and many many more rules. If you need to get your produce in the market, you will have to start familiarizing yourself with some of these rules, believe me. Now. There are some qualities you need to consider should you choose to seriously venture into these projects. I should have mentioned this at the beginning, I think. Chosen mangoes should have the right appearance to start with. No skin damage, soil or even bad poop on the surface. In fact, if the fruits drops on the soil during harvest, you cannot use them for export market. The best mangoes for drying must be ripe and at the same time, they have to be firm. Ripeness is correlated to sweetness and firmness will make processing or slicing easy. The large commercial farmers have tools to determine the ripeness or sugar content, but I guess for you, you have to depend on your experience. 
if the fruit is overripe, it can be used to make juice, but not for this process. The source of the mangoes also matters. Do you know the chemicals and the fertilizers used in the production? Were the mangoes collected on the ground or harvested the right way? And how was the fruits transported or the traceability issues? There are various mango varieties in Kenya, and as you process them, you will settle for the one that has the best drying qualities. The aim of this video is not to overwhelm you with standards and all. As I said, this is the best time in Kenya for you to do this project. I have noted it's very hot, sunny, windy, and dry. The relative humidity is around 35 to 45%. Mangoes are in season, cheap, although for a short time. That sounds like an opportunity to make money, huh? As you slice the mangoes, you have to get uniform thin slices. Thick slices are not desirable as they will take a long time to dry, and that can lead to other challenges. If the fruit is firm and the knife is sharp enough, this process will be easy. To dry the mangoes, I will use a large sufuria, cover with clean gunia, and place the mango slices on top, and then cover with a clean net on top. The idea is to allow sunlight to get to the pieces and any radiation that gets into the sufuria is reflected back still to heat the pieces once again from the bottom. By the way, you can decide to use an automated oven to achieve the same purpose. Some farmers have also improvised solar dryers with the bigger capacities too. Either case, you have to ensure that you manipulate the heat, relative humidity, and the circulating air for best results. Because if this is not done right, it can result to growing of toxic molds on the product. And that is not something that you want. I am assuming you will take your time to clean the materials used with clean soapy water. By materials, I mean the gunia, the net, and the sufuria. And of course, rinse with enough clean water too. You need to avoid perfumed detergents during this process. I know my sufuria looks dirty, but it's because of the long time use with firewood. Believe me, it's clean. Once the materials are dry, you first place the gunia on top of the open sufuria, just like this. You can use a twine to hold it firm in place, and then you can start placing the slices individually on the surface. No slice should be placed on top of the other. Just take your time and do a good job. After you are done, it's time to cover with the net. The idea with the net is to avoid other pests and animals that also like sweet stuff. Such insects may even introduce contamination to your work. Imagine after all that effort, that would be bad. Once you install the net, then it's time to place the setup outside in the direct sunlight. The heat and the wind will do the work for me. This will be the routine for the next five or so days. I bring them out at sunrise and then 
take them indoors in the evening. Since I am done with that, it is time to clean the table. Let me see what is left. You know, back in the village, once you picked a mango from the tree, after cleaning, you started eating the fruit directly, without peeling. You eat the skin too. Today, you cannot do this. Chemical residues and water pollution is now on another level. Check out my previous video on water pollution in Kenya. This fruit is pure sweetness. You want to taste? Okay, I'll give you a piece. Well, too bad. I guess you have to trust me that this fruit is really sweet. You also add to ensure that the seed is clean white. Those were some of the pleasures in life when you are growing up. Of course, you can't eat anything when processing the fruits. Remember, I am only doing this because I am through with the first part of the project. I am now left with the skin. What should I do with this? Should I eat it or use it as fodder? That's a tough decision to make. Anyway, let's get back to the project. Ta-da! This is so good. Guys, this is success. I can tell you for free. I am glad everything worked out to my favor. There is no modes to start with. The orange color is still intact. The texture is tough, rubber-like as expected. And now it's time to taste. Who do you think should do the honors? You or me? Oh, I'm glad you have chosen me to represent you to undertake this crucial step. Mm, compared to fresh mango, this is sweeter, I must say. What if I expand this project and do more? Pack and store them safely, waiting for about two or three months. That time, there will be no fresh mangoes in the market. And then, reintroduce the product out in the market. Selling to guys after church on Sundays and social gatherings. Most parents will buy this over sweets and biscuits, I would imagine. Kenyan farmers should not lose half of their farm produce to spoilage. Drying extends the shelf life of the product. I also mentioned that about 80% of the mango weight is water. Meaning... If you dry a tan, you are left with a product you can even transport with a boda boda. This product can fetch better prices for longer after there is no fresh mangoes in the market. The other day, I saw some guys in the defense forces doing this, drying food. That's a very good survival tactic. Kenya is in the middle of one of the worst drought seasons today. If the children in the worst eat areas got this product, it would go a long way instead of depending on those toxic wild fruits. God has blessed Kenya with many resources. However, our priorities 
are just everywhere. Anyway, mangoes are not the only fruits that can be preserved by this method. There are also many fruits and vegetables out there that can be preserved using the same method. I hope you have learned something today or you are just inspired. Remember to like, share and subscribe. May God bless the work of your hands. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video and God bless you.